the next speaker, you finished with, uh, with a book and I would like to introduce the next speaker with a book. Uh, the Mesh, a primer to the collaborative economy. Was a really, uh, it, it's a book that, that moved something, I think. And Lisa Gansky, uh, as the author of this bestseller, as a serial entrepreneur, is one of the, the figures in the collaborative uh, community that is moving many things. And here she is coming to share something about shared value creation. Lisa, please welcome Lisa Gansky. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Um, Primavera, I have to say, raised my blood pressure <laughs> about the future. Um, so I want to talk about, the. we're in this moment, I, I will do a little retrospective of where I think we are and how we got here uh, quickly, but basically we're in a moment where trust is very front and center. Um, I was thinking coming here for whatever reason, uh, I had breakfast, I admit it. But also, uh, there's a Spanish expression, which is, um, estamos juntos, pero no revueltos, which means we're together, but not scrambled. And, and for me, this is kind of a good way to encapsulate where we are at this moment, because we're together, and we're about to be scrambled in ways that are uh, calling on new and different facility for us, tools, lexicon, policies and ways of thinking about our society and our communities and ourselves. Um, as a flashback, I, I refer to last century as the century of the generals. It was top-down, one-to-many, applied the military model towards you know, government and large institutions like corporations. But in addition to that, I think that we don't really realize the extent to which this ontology, this way of thinking, pervaded how we think about ourselves and our communities and our way of life. Um, one of the big things that happened, of course, and it was mostly seriously conspicuous in, in and around 2008, um, I like this guy, he's, he's called Dick Dastardly, um, not very trustworthy. Uh, and so what happened is basically, you know, in, in this moment and certainly we leading up in the last 10 years, we have lost faith in our institutions, especially, uh, is anyone here in the banking business or the energy business? So the two industries that are the least trusted in the world um, and big brands, the way that we would navigate who to trust, uh, institutions that were around for a long time, all of those guys called our trust into question and that created a crack in the armor that was great for us because as entrepreneurs, as instigators, as collaborators, it caused people, many people who aren't inside of our community but around the world of all uh, demographics to begin to try and be willing to try uh, new ideas, um, talk to people and uh, begin to interact with companies and brands that they never heard of. And so this is a great moment because it, it, me it meant that we could accelerate the opportunity of the collaborative economy. This century, the 21st century, um, has a, you know, a different organization. Now, by the way, I, I love this um, drawing, but I didn't do it. Um, I tried to find the author, so if anyone knows who the author of it, it please let me know. Um, on the right side, the ego is a great, for me, way of encapsulating last century. It's top-down, very hierarchical, and organized around the notion of control. And on the eco side, it's much more around ecosystems, relationships, and the ability to call on sort of what's needed as it's needed, uh, and also to give back to the ecosystem. So, these are two models that are really dramatically different. And I think that a lot of the things that we're struggling with, and as we think about blockchain and trust and some other things uh, uh, in, in accelerating the collaborative economy, we can see in this configuration that we are actually needing to change some fundamental aspects, some ontology or social operating system to make the thing move in, in with the speed and the direction we want it to go. 
the other thing I, I like to start with is this idea that, again, um, how many people in this room consider themselves innovators? Cool. How many people consider themselves op optimistic about the future? Okay, great, thank you, me too. Um, so, so my observation especially uh, brought home for me in working with a lot of um, governments and large old institutions is that people there, they walk around <laughs> talking to their shoes, they're like collapse in meetings, they don't really look at each other. It's like the, the sensation, the mood is not optimistic. Um, cities and, co and countries sometimes also have a mood. Um, if you think that your best days are behind you, we're in deep doo-doo, right? That the opportunity to create a new and compelling future and to innovate really has to come from seeing the possibility of the future and being open and optimistic. And I think that this is a fundamental part of our, uh, what we can bring to um, the, the other groups, you know, other communities, is we can spread the optimism about the future because that in fact is necessary to make the shift. So, um, and by way of background, the other metaphor that I've found useful, which I'll share, is this idea of the blue dye effect. So, um, I don't know, when I was in school, you would inject like blue dye into a cell and look at it and suddenly you could see all this really cool stuff in the microscope that you couldn't see otherwise. The blue dye actually takes something that's invisible and makes it visible. And in the collaborative economy, so much of what's happened with the enablement of technology is to have taken things like part of our homes, our tools, our talents, our cars, uh, office buildings that were hidden assets, intellectual property, and be able to make them visible uh, through these platforms and through our, our connections and communities in a way that allows for that waste or those assets to be used in, in valuable ways. So, but we're all running around like, so this is the confession part. Uh, who here has a, a mobile device with a web uh, connection and a GPS and all those sorts of things? Right, who has two? Who has more than two? Okay, <laughs> who considers themselves an early adopter? Okay, let me, let me give you my definition of early adopter. Early adopter is someone who overpays for shit that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, and, and, and you have to do that plus be proud of it. So who, who's one of those? <laughs> yeah, okay, see me after class. All right, so, so here we're all running around with these sensors, right? Because we, and we, we're moving around in the world. So we're at, to Primavera's point, there's a lot of information, not necessarily being tied to me as a person, but, but information that could be or is being gathered. So in this case, the blue dye effect in action is, here's a map of Paris. Uh, there's a guy whose work I like a lot called Garrett Miller with Mapbox. He took, um, for those geeks like me who are into photography, uh, every photo we take has EXIF data. That data has a time and date stamp, but also GPS some other information as well. They uh, grabbed off of one, per one particular moment Flickr data, uh, I laid it across a map of Paris to show exactly where people were when they took photos. And uh, the density of the, of the points show the, f the, the quantity of people who took a photo more or less in the same place. Now, you know, when I see something like this, I think, wow, you know, cities, who are doing planning should know about this. Um, my friends at SNCF who are doing transportation planning should know about this. Uh, you know, people who are designing buildings, streets, transportation systems, we, we're thinking of doing a, a, a pop-up in some part of the city. It would be great to know uh, where the traffic is, who's going to different places for what sorts of things. So just as an example, we have a higher fidelity, a higher resolution possible today than we've ever had before in terms of you know, where we are, who's doing what, and what's missing. Um, 
The other thing that we've certainly seen of the collaborative economy is we are ma we're managing to liberate ourselves from the middleman and uh, continuously going more and more directly with each other, which is not only liberating but potentially powerful and also potentially perhaps um, unsettling. And I think that w as a uh, sort of a, a geek uh, from years ago with the internet uh, in the early days like we spoke about this morning, one of the things is that we envisioned when we were starting in 93 and 94 with my friend jo John Perry Barlow and EFF, um, you know, that the idea would be we would empower each other, that the world would be flat and that we would be able to have a level playing field. Um, clearly that didn't play out that way. And one of the things that we need to think about here certainly is, we, is when we come together, how, how do we build trust? Because when the internet with the web and the internet in general in terms of the architecture, decentralized as it is, we, we were missing the ability to authenticate and to be able to have a kind of a, a dis decentralized trust broker in a way that would enable us to go direct to one another. So, you know, while we can, you know, we have plenty of opportunities and ways to trust each other and will continue to do so, um, we are rapidly moving to a moment when we're, there's an opportunity, I think, with blockchain, and this is, you know, my, my metric is the little hairs on the back of my neck kind of stand up because when I saw what blockchain is and could be, uh, I had the same feeling, and I'm looking at my friend Tristan here who is at Mozilla and we've gone through a lot of this together, that it's a very deja vu moment, that, that blockchain as a, brings a sort of missing piece of the puzzle. Yes, all the things that Primavera said are possibilities, but I believe that this is the moment for us to, to get clear about what's possible and to shape uh, the movement in the direction that it needs to go. because. People are not navigating anymore by brands, and I think that leaves a big opportunity for uh, creating a new kind of trust and transparency. Um, some of the ethos that I think are very important for blockchain and to be ported into uh, the collaborative society are things like it's unownable, it's shared fully, um, and it's transparent. Um, so in addition to, we know that it's a, led, uh, a universal ledger, you can add things and can't take things away. These qualities, I think, are, are fundamental, not only with respect to blockchain specifically, but also as we think about sharing value and building platforms in the next wave of the collaborative economy. Um, blockchain right now, I initially, and Bitcoin is the most conspicuous example, so people think of blockchain Having to do about uh, having to do with now, I don't speak French, but I'm speaking English like I speak French, so that's really bad. Uh, <laughs> um, so you know, blockchain. It was, most of the applications that we think of, because they're the most conspicuous, have to do with finance. But you know, my friends at Trady are thinking about reputation and the blockchain. Uh, our 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 colleagues and allies and friends at Provenance in the UK are looking at transparent uh, supply chains and blockchain so that when you or I buy a particular piece of clothing and feel good about it because it's fair trade, what we don't know is what's really the fair trade. You know, did the, the person who really did the work in Vietnam or in uh, Africa or in New Jersey or or um, you know, in Lyon, did they get paid? Well, how much did they get paid and how much it was taken out along the way? So a lot of these things blockchain can solve for, um, international remits, P2P, P2P messaging, certainly transportation systems and lazoos, uh, I think if you're familiar, is a good first example of stirring the pot in that direction. So we're really, really early, super early. It's like 1993 or four in internet years uh, with respect to blockchain. We're, we're trying a lot of things. The experiments in two years, we might look back and think that was ridiculous. Like, I can't believe we even thought about that in that way. But the idea for us, I think, and I'm encouraging all of us to dive in and to play and experiment, uh, to build things, to test, and to, to radically and pathologically share 
what we're learning because there's a big opportunity in here uh, and it's, 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 it's far more diverse than the small list that I put together here. So I think we're moving from this idea of trusting in banks to trusting in brands to trusting in us. And there's some big missing pieces. Blockchain potentially has a lot of the piece of that. Um, I think also, and one of the themes that's been in this morning is that we're missing um, the, the language that we have, like the two diagrams, the, the triangle and the circle, the hierarchical thing and the eco thing is, we're moving into a very different social operating system, a different way of behaving, uh, being related to each other because we don't have the brands and the big platforms uh, in the middle all the time, right? We're basically disintermediating, th disintermediating them. So this is calling for a new kind of uh, a, a social operating system and I think we share is, is a great example. Uh, there are many others in, in the room and in this community but we share itself, from my perspective, has been trying hard to blend the structure of a model of how to bring really talented people with different backgrounds and biases together to create something. Uh, this is just a, a, a photo I took when we were on a call all together, but to me, they, they've also been looking at creating systems, tools, people, and, and enabling uh, creativity and community at the same time in a really interesting way. So, there are many examples, but I think, again, social operating system and the new social operating system is really fundamental. And then just uh, wrapping on this is resilience in communities is, is uh, th 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 in a way, that for me, the blockchain is a possibility for uh, creating an audit trail and a, a way of tr of transacting and, and reacting and communicating and relating together that we've been missing. Um, and we, on a constant basis, whether we see it or not, are, are self-organizing as communities, as teams or companies on a much more pulsing base than we have ever before. You know, the rate of innovation and the rate of reorganization and reacting and responding to whether it's nature or opportunity in the marketplace is just accelerating. And so this sort of core muscle of being able to learn and be responsive and blockchain is actually a way to see the history of where people came from and how frequently they relate together or not. Um, and so uh, this is a, an equation I've, um, I've, I've uh, stolen from my friends at Yertle in San Francisco. Um, I just like it because to me, it means it's really core to when uh, all of us early adopters, you know, we, we, in, in, we uh, engage with technology when the value of participating is, is uh, lower than the effort. You know, we like having hard effort because that's part of the value that we have for being early. But the rest of the people, uh, the mortals, the, the normal people, <laughs> If there, are, or if there are any of those. Um, the, the p most people and the marketplace, when something shifts from being a little fringe activity to a major force on the planet, it's because the value has grown and to be greater than the effort. And I think that we're starting to see this with some of the first wave of collaborative uh, platforms, but I believe that blockchain is actually the gateway, is the missing piece of the puzzle to make the value exceed the effort. And, uh, and now we, we'll begin the exploration. So in closing, I just offer you one of my favorite proverbs from Mexico, um, and thank you very much. <laughs>